Hello everybody. Um, I'm doing something a little bit different for the sound today, so uh, if I sound a bit different, uh, that's why. I'm fiddling around with the filters and the positioning of my recorder just to see if it makes things sound makes things sound a bit better or a bit worse. Who knows how it'll work out, but if you could let me know in the comments that would be great. Um, this video I want to talk about power banks, uh, USB power banks, specifically the solar powered kind. Um, now, uh, power banks, you can get them everywhere now, and they even given them away as free gifts. My wife, who uh, works in speech therapy, went to a conference recently, and they were just handing them out as free gifts, branded with a, the medicine or the pharmaceutical company's logo. Uh, they're a, truly a commodity item, but most of them are a bit weak, a bit mad, you know, like 2,000 milliamp hours or whatever, and you don't, really, you don't really get that full power into your phone, because there's always losses involved in the sort of transference of power. Um... But that's for the ones that are powered off the... No, that you charge off a USB charger in the mains. Um, I would like to be able to have a, a fairly sizable USB power bank. Uh, something that maybe holds at least 5,000 milliamp hours. And also be able to charge it from the sun in a reasonable amount of time. Now, as you've probably seen from some of my other videos, I haven't exactly had a lot of luck with uh, USB power banks. Uh, the one I tested recently, which was a, a good quality one, was only generating something like 80 milliamps at a time. And that was... Occasionally it would go up to about 170 if I remember rightly when the sun came out, but generally it was pretty poor and did the sums and it would take oh, a couple of weeks maybe at, mo at worst to be char to charge the battery inside. Um, and even if you were in a really sunny place like Spain or Florida, it would still take a, f a few days to charge. So I want to be able to do is build a power bank with a decent size, decent capacity and be able to charge it from the sun. So one of the things I found on eBay was these... Uh, Solar panels, they seem f uh, decent enough, a bit, possibly a bit flimsy, I would worry about them falling apart, but if you built them into a, a secure housing they should be okay. Uh, there's not much light in the shed right now, but let's see if I'm generating anything at all. I'll just hold this to the door. Nope, not. I missed the sun, unfortunately, but uh, yeah, they generate uh, 5 volts. Um, and anything from like 50 or 60 milliamps in the shade up to about uh, four or 500 milliamps, which isn't bad. That's actually not bad for a, a solar panel. Again, you're probably going to be down the lower end usually because that's the climate we live in. But anyway, what I want to do is sort of, at the very least, build a sort of structure for uh, the, the basic structure of a, a sort of power bank. So what I have here is two little modules, which you'll find on eBay. First one is the TE106. And what this is, is a battery charger <clears throat> for a lithium-ion battery. A uh, 3.7 volt lithium-ion battery, i.e. the 18650, which is the standard sort of battery you find in a power bank. On board there's a microprocessor, uh, which is, if I correct, the, the TP4056. Uh, you can go off and look online for the data sheet if you're interested in that kind of thing. But it's a, a fairly simple processor well, it's actually quite sophisticated it handles charging it has a charging curve so it charges a little bit then it ramps up the volt charges of a little bit of voltage then after a while it ramps the voltage up and then it detects the status of the battery and once the battery is fully charged it switches itself off and there's also an led i believe it's a red and a blue red is for charging blue is for uh fully charged only downside it uses mini usb instead of micro usb so obviously this was designed a few years ago but these were, um, I bought them in a packet of five and they worked out at 71 cents each, euro cents, which is phenomenally cheap for what for what it is. And at the other end of the the, uh, the setup, I would have this device, which is a DC boost converter. There's no specific model number, but if you just do a search online on eBay or AliExpress or the usual places for a three volt to five volt boost, DC boost converter, you'll find this. This just literally ramps up the voltage from the battery from 3.7 volts to five. Um, this was more expensive. This was one euro eleven uh, in a packet of five. So, uh, so one one euro eleven each to buy in a packet of five. So it was like six six euro something altogether. But you know, still a handy enough little thing to have lying around. So anyway, I'm going to start putting this all together. So what I've done is I took a battery, which is an eighteen hundred milliamp hour battery, which I took out of this uh, power bank, which uh, was from Maplin's. It was six euro and it failed. Uh, a bit of water got inside it and the main board got rusted so but the battery is hunky-dory ah. 
Before I continue, I need to strip the cables off, which is stupid of me. I should have done that before the video, when I was getting prepared. Of course, I didn't, which was silly. Come on. This one's been tough. There we go. Don't know what was going on there. Because generally, it's usually a bit better. Of course, to confuse myself, I used the same color cable for live and negative. But I uh, drew a purple line on the side so I can tell them apart. Um, let's do a quick voltage check on this. Um, it should be, it's almost fully charged. 3.65, yeah, so it's, it's, I think this battery is at about 70% capacity. I should have drained it down a bit, but I didn't. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, using these things, because this is a prototype, and if this works, then I'll probably move on to building it onto a circuit board. But I'll take the red and the white to begin with, and just clip them on here. Where is, that's positive and that's negative. Yeah, it was a big, oh, it was a big air show in Dublin today. Well, Bray, which is a town in South Dublin. It's actually in Wicklow. But it's really just a suburb of Dublin. Um, so, you know, I wasn't didn't go anywhere near it, but I seen all the planes flying over, overhead all day. It was quite nice. Um, really scaring the life out of people who weren't expecting the... It was the Italian Air Force display planes to come flying through, and they're noisy. They're very noisy. So I'm just going to plug in this uh, micro USB here. Let's see if what happens, make sure I've got the right one. So something should start to happen when I plug this on. He says, famous last words. Ah. Nothing. It's plugged in, this power. What is going on? Let's see if there's any voltage flowing. Of course it's going to take power from the battery, so I just need to disconnect them. Silly me. Three volts coming through, okay. I was expecting lights. I'll tell you what I'll do, I'll try another one. Um <clears throat> they actually come in strips like this. If you want one, snap it off. Which is quite uh, impressive. Such an oh, it is an impressive piece of technology. No, it's not like uh, this is no. A lot of brain power went into development of this, and the fact that it's now you can have a you can just churn them out for seventy one cents each. Well, oh, actually, they're probably the factory's churning them out for a lot less than that, but they're selling them for as little as seventy one cents each, and they're still making a profit. That's impressive. Actually, I put I took out the wrong one. Silly me. <laughs> oh dear. Here we go. Let's uh, attach up again. Make sure I get positive onto the right one. That's positive there. So that if there's no lights, then I'm not that fussed. But it'd be nice to have the lights just for feedback. Because if I was actually making a proper, if I was going to go ahead and do this and make a big heavy duty power bank, I would actually want to build in some kind of digital readout. And you can buy inline power meters cheaply enough. Still, no. Nope. Of course, there's a possibility that I need I need to look up some instructions on the data sheet for the TE4056 uh, chip to find out how it all works, and maybe there there is a way to switch on the light that I'm not the lights the LEDs. Yeah, again, where's my LED lights? I want them. 
Okay. Well, part two of the video, I'll probably go and look it up and see. See if I'm, what I'm doing wrong. But I'll, tell you what, I'll just give it another quick check just to make sure that the voltage is flowing. Yep. Three volts thereabouts. Not bad. I can live with that. And uh, so I'll attach that to there. And that to there. And um, just to see if it's working or not, I'll attach this up as well. So I need another two leads. Uh, that's the negative. And I'll just attach into the circuit, onto the battery itself. I don't need to do anything fancy. And to test it, I use the IKEA LED lamp that looks vaguely like Terry Wogan's microphone from Blankety Blank, which was a British game show. It was based on an American game show called um, The Match Game. Um, and frankly, it was terrible, but it was still surprisingly watchable. Yeah. Blankety blank, 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 blankety blank. Sorry about that. Um, my phone ran out of battery power, so I had to uh, run off for an hour or two to charge it up. Uh, and when I was away, um, I had a slight problem in that I accidentally short circuited the battery and therefore discharged it. But the byproduct is, for some reason now, the LED is working on this. I'm not quite sure why that's what's changed. Actually, I do know what has changed. No, actually I don't. I was thinking if it was something to do with the plugging in sequence. No, so I'm going to reattach the battery. Oh, what am I dropping? Oh, that there. Uh, to here. That creaking sound you hear in the background is the back door which of our house that should be tied up properly. So there we go, it's red. So that means it's charging. And it is a bit wonky because the it keeps falling over and losing the connection. But anyway, there you go. So it's a uh, the battery, yeah, I completely discharged the battery. If I bring the meter in just to show you the voltage. Well, actually, this isn't the way to do it because it's charging up. But let me just see the voltage anyway going through. Oh. I'll try and get a better connection. Get out of AC mode first of all, that would be very helpful. Yeah, thank you, silly Robert. Interesting. There's one volt going through right now. So, um, that's not bad at all. Like I say, what I'm going to do is, uh, I'm actually going to stop charging it now. Uh, take take this, uh, the uh, output side of it away. And take this into work tomorrow. And where I work, next to a very big glass window in the centre of Dublin. Plug it into this panel here. And we will see how well this works. Because I'm going to take some measurements every 15 minutes or so to see how much power is going into the battery and if it works then great uh, that's uh, the first part of the prototype working because the ultimate aim would be to have multiple batteries um, you know, this is a 1800 milliamp hour battery uh, I would probably work on with 2000 milliamp hour batteries put five of them in then you get 10,000 milliamp hours which is more than enough to charge your phone possibly twice uh, to fully charge from nothing because bear in mind that charging 
USB char uh, power banks never give you full efficiency. You always lose 20-30% of the power in the charging process. So it means if you get a 1000 milliamp hour uh, power bank, you'd really only get 70 or 80 percent of that power into your phone, but that's normal. So, anyway, there we go. Uh, like I say, it's a cheap way of building a power bank. So, I'll see how it goes tomorrow. I'll be back for part two. Cheerio, bye bye.